Hey everybody, it's Eric here again. And today, let's get serious and let's talk about what's going on with the recession that's coming. It's coming. What's going on? What is a recession? And then also, why we need this recession. Do me a favor, please like, share, do your thing, comment, follow, would love it. Uh, so we can have more of these uh, these kind of discussions and talks. I love getting feedback and, and seeing what everybody else has got going on in there. Love small business, love all this. So anyway, let, let's dive into what's going on. Everybody has been saying for a while, we are headed towards a recession. And I could probably say I've been saying since 2018, I am feel like the boy who cried wolf saying, hey, recession, recession. And there's a reason behind this. And we'll talk about that real quick. Um, then I, I have to disclose, I had to refilm this video twice because I have a real hard time with the whole, we need a recession. We do need a recession. And it sucks because it's painful. People lose their jobs. People lose their businesses. Things are bad. People have a hard time getting food. They lose their houses. But this is good and we need it in the long run. And that's really hard to say, but we'll get to that. So, okay, what is going on here? So let's let's roll back to like kind of the perfect storm and, and dig into it. This recession has been kind of looming out there for a very, very long time. You're probably like, well, maybe you're like, what the heck's a recession? A recession is a technical term that really relates to the stock market. So investors and things like that can make decisions where you have two quarters of negative what's called GDP growth. And that's the gross domestic product that we make as a country. And you know, export or, or whatever. And we always want to see that growing because that means that we're growing. We're getting better. We're making more money. We're getting faster. Things are getting cheaper. Things are getting smarter. Growth is good. Um, that's, that's really what it's always come down to. So when you have negative growth, it means, you know, that, that money's not happening. It's, it's going in reverse. And the problem I have with the recession metrics are they lag so, so bad. And so if you're like, well, wait a minute, two quarters of negative growth, those get reported after the pain has already started, which means that you've had two quarters where the country has not done as well as it should have. Not only that, is there so many chains and levels to this, the lower end manufacturing and smaller businesses feel the pain first before it trickles up to the larger organizations that really show up in those numbers. And so by the time that they call a recession is happening, there has already been at least six months of pain and we're already starting to see those signs in small business and these other things. And let's kind of talk about that because I know a lot of people that have started businesses, which I am so proud of and I love, uh, they've never seen this. There is not a Gen Z or out there that I believe was working during the last downturn. And a lot of um, millennials were just starting out when the 2008 crash happened. And you've got to back up even further because the 2008 crash really, really started to see some signs of problems back in 2006. That's when I was starting to see problems in business and in real estate. But it didn't actually get called as a national problem until almost what, 18 months later in 2008. So it's really hard to you know, say, and, and that's what I, bugs me about the news and mainstream media and these indicators, because by the time they're talking about it, it's too late. So back to what I was saying, in 2008, recession lights were going off. Like I, I was really nervous about some of my investments and investing. And why that was happening is, I'll go back to the housing and interest rate markets. So the Federal Reserve at the time, those are kind of who sets the standards of interest rates, said, hey, uh, this market's going too well. You know, we've had a long run-up from 2011 to 2018. It's good. It's been one of the longest run-ups in history. We probably need to pull things back and, and pull back our stimulus a little bit. And I actually listed a house for sale in April of 2018, and I expected it to go like that. But they started making changes, um, and interest rates went up. Not much, but just enough that it killed the housing market in 2018. And by the fall of 2018, the, the real estate market and the loan market was in a slump. And so the Federal Reserve said, whoa, we probably need to back this off a little bit because, you know, hey, we we've essentially are killing the housing market. And so they backed off of their policies a little bit. Um, but then there was other signs in the economy that that trickles down to everything is tied together. Real estate, small business, finance, the stock market, like it is all tied together. Um, forget about even just global stuff, which we can talk about some of that in a bit. 
those things are all, but they all gauge at different times. So the stock market is quick. Like if there's pain and things like that, you're going to see it really quick. And you've been seeing that in the stock market for the last three months. It has not been a pretty sight. But the housing market's been going, going strong because the housing market, it lags. Because generally when people start looking for a house, they're thinking six months out. And then they go in for loans and they or builds. And we're talking a long stretch of things to happen. So the housing market is just barely starting to see some signs of pain. And this is uh, middle of April, tax day. <laughs> um, and uh, the stock market's been sick for a while, it looks like. I mean, it, it's, it's going correction. So these are the things that a lot of people my age and probably a little bit younger that are in, you know, owning their business and, and things like that. They never saw these signs before. And I watch a lot of these YouTubers and there's some famous ones out there. And the way they talk is it only goes up. I'm going to do these risky investments and I'm going to take this money and I'm going to pile it in here and I'm going to leverage here. And guess what? One day that's not going to work for them. And I, I, I have FOMO, right? I, I sit there sometimes I'm like, Oh man, if I just took some of my, took a little bit more risk on some of these things and, and dove right in. But again, I'm back to 2018 and I saw some of these signs of, of recession. And so it's, I'm really cautious because I did have a business in 2008. I did have real estate in 2008 and I went through that pain and being somewhat conservative with some of these and not being over leveraged is the reason that those things survived and thrived on the other side. So a warning out there to all those people that, uh, you know, that think that things always go up and the federal reserve would love things to always go up and that's kind of where we're at so oh, that's what's been going on 2019 hit uh, we got some tax cuts and things like that because we we're also showing some signs of slowing and it went through the roof um, you know things kept going up and up and up so we really didn't if you look at these graphs we really didn't have any major slowdowns and then of course the spring of 2020 hit and there was panic and oil went to zero and there was a real big pullback and we turned on those money printers and just did stuff that we've never done to the level that we've done and just sent things to the moon. And now we are kind of in the position to where it is the perfect storm and we have to pay for these things. And uh, the money that was given to individuals are now gone. A lot of people's savings, if you look at the numbers and you know um, they're down from where they were in the last 18 months. If you also look at credit card balances, they are up were they you know bigger than they've been in the last couple of years so i just got back from a vegas trip and it's like wow it's like nothing's wrong nothing's happening all these people are out here having fun and spending money but i feel like the general consumer hasn't really absorbed this yet but i can tell you small businesses are and it's not good and so you know real quick let's talk about some of the other things that, that kind of got us here and this isn't just like one president made a bad decision or Congress made a bad decision. These are lots of bad decisions during good times for the last 10 years. And real estate is gone through the roof and overvalued because of all this money printing. If you look back through history, every time they print large amounts of money, assets like real estate go through the roof. Um, the stock market, same thing. It was already pretty overvalued. I had a hard time in 2018, 2019. And then everybody piled in. They took their stimulus money and piled into the stock market. and. There's this age old thing and you can see it through every single crash and downturn. People start saying that, oh, the rules of yesterday don't apply. The valuations of that we've been valuing companies for, for 20 years, you know, don't apply. And I'll give a great example. A great valuation on a small business is five times revenue. In fact, that's incredible. Most business owners out there, if they could get five times their revenue and sell their business, they do it today. If you're looking at a lot of where these stocks were at the end of 2021, there was 70 times revenue valuations. Some of them were over 100 times value uh, valuations. That is insane. That means that that company would have to operate more than 100 years to make that kind of money to, to pay back their investors. And that's not even profit. That's just total revenue. And so if you talk to a lot of these people that you know entered the market, it's like, well, how does that compute? But you know, you had nowhere else to put your money. So people kept piling in. So first of all, we're seeing some reality, you know, being priced into the market and, and some of these valuations come down to, well, maybe it's not that insane to, to value some of the way we used to value some of these companies. The real estate thing talked about that briefly, but it is also, if you look at this chart, it is way worse than 2008. And if that's not a bubble, I don't know what it is. So kind of, kind of where that's at. And then People kept buying because interest rates are low. Debt is cheap. But now we're back to the 2019 thing. Is it's like the Federal Reserve saying, hey, we need to tighten the stimulus a little bit. And refinances have already slowed down. 
because nobody wants, I mean, we went from a 2.5% interest rate for some properties up to a 5.5 today, and it just keeps going higher and higher and higher. Why the heck would anybody want to buy a property? I mean, if you look at these amortization tables, a $450,000 house, what the difference is at 2.5% interest and 5.5% interest. It is a massive amount of money difference, and it's a big difference in the actual payment. And let's face it, people buy the payment, not the actual price of the house. And so people are second guessing, well, maybe I don't need this house right now. Maybe I'm fine just where I'm at. So we've got that going on. Um, debt, the cheap debt is going away for businesses. And let's face it, so if you, if you want to invest and buy equipment for your business and things like that, you're also being subject to those higher interest rates. So businesses are like, well, man, it was great yesterday. Maybe, I, I, maybe it'll be back. Let's wish it'll come back, and it may. Let's not do this right now. And so they're not taking on debt. And then of course, the ultimate thing that it's only the visible stuff that people see is the global stuff. Of course, the virus, you know, things going on in Russia, things going on, you know, in China's in total lockdown right now. I mean, we, we cannot get equipment here. Of course, the embargoes and, and things like that that have been going on with technology. We have a supply chain issue that I don't even think has been realized yet that is so incredibly bad um, it's, it's, it's halting progress. And that's going to start to show up in our GDP numbers, which is also going to reinforce the recession situation. And then of course, oil. Oil, anytime oil has really been over $100 a barrel for any length of time, there's been a recession. So again, a recession may not mean much to people because it's a technical term for the stock market. But in reality, you're probably feeling or starting to feel the side effects of a recession now. And you're going to have some pain long before the actual you know government declares in a recession and so that's coming and we're already seeing the the, the things of that especially if you're you're a you know middle income uh, low wage worker if you're somebody you know that owns a business you're starting to see some signs that there may be some trouble down the line um, so okay on to the hard part recessions they're bad people lose their houses people lose their jobs people lose their businesses, people, you know, their credit cards get cut, bankruptcies go up. It is just so bad everywhere for, you know, recession. It's just not fun, but it's kind of needed. And that's where I, I hate to say these words. I know I'll get a lot of hate over this, but you cannot always have an over, always up market. And it's been going on so long that we don't know any different. We, we've forgotten. I, I, I go back and I'm like, man, 2008, I remember how I was feeling when things were coming down and that we're so far away from that at this point because it felt like that that was going to last forever. Worst, worst financial crisis in history, it felt like it was gonna last forever. And here we are so many years later and it's like, wow, that was that long ago. But what this has created, this longest run up, and it, 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 it's, again, it's government interference, it's you know things, because nobody wants to be the political party or be in charge when there's a recession or a bad economy or there's pain for the public. That's bad for your party, that's bad for your job. So nobody wants it. So they stimulate, stimulate, stimulate and pass the buck and then pass the buck and pass the buck. And so here we are. The buck's been passed so far, we've got a lot of bad businesses out there. And if you look at the money printing and who it was given to and the loans from the government and the stimulus from last year, 2020 and 2021, we've created a lot of zombie businesses and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, kind of put this on, on a level that kind of resonates with everybody else. When is the last time you called a large company and you had absolute horrible, horrible customer service? I can tell you I've interfaced with banks lately, big banks, big cellular companies, big internet companies, and first of all, their process automation is so horrible. Like if you don't fit in their little box, you can't get any kind of resolution. And when you escalate things and actually talk to people, their attitude is, okay, go somewhere else. Somebody else is gonna walk in the door and, and, and take your spot. That's horrible business. It's gotten so bad to the point to where these larger businesses just don't care about consumers. They don't care about their buyers because you know what they know? They don't have to have a good product. The next person that walks in the door, psh, they'll buy it. So who cares about you? We have created so many, so many, so many bad business and such horrible customer service because the attitude is, eh, I don't need you. This is a big reason we need a recession because these businesses, and it's not just big businesses, it's all businesses. We, we need them to want us. We need them to work for us. We need them to innovate for us, to want us to spend our dollars, our hard earned limited dollars with them. But right now, they don't have to worry about it. And so they are on their worst 
bad behavior. And we have just, it, it's explosive. I, I, I don't know, you know, don't care what industry you're in, but it's that way. And I learned customer service through the 2008 downturn because you know what, you had to. You absolutely had to, to stick around and keep in business. Um, so my hope is, and again, I think this recession is unavoidable, we get a lot, a lot more, more businesses that are willing to work for us and be on their best behavior. So the next thing is the zombie businesses. There has been so much money printed, and, and I've talked to a lot of different businesses of all sizes, that you think about it from between the PPP loans and the EIDL and some of the other stuff that was out there, there was businesses that didn't have any expenses for up to four months. Well, if a business has an operating uh, profit margin of 20%, and they all, all of a sudden don't have to pay any of their expenses really for almost four months, that's a lot of money that goes right in their bank to do stuff with later. And you know, if sales drops, if, if you know, things happen, and I wanna point out that some of these loans and practices were given to the companies that had the most drop in sales, the most drop in things. So instead of having to work for retaining that business, the ones that were performing the worst got the most money. And so, you know, they banked it and just used that to, to kind of get through the, you know, the time period. And a lot of them still have some money in the bank, but it's slowly bleeding off as, as they get through this process. And so there are a lot of businesses that probably shouldn't be in business today that have been uplifted by government stimulus that probably won't make it through any kind of recession unless we print more money, which is just going to create this problem worse. And that's a different thing. Businesses have to fail. Businesses have to fail. I love it when people create businesses, but there's no innovation if businesses don't fail. And so unfortunately, there's a ton of zombie businesses. And I'm hearing chains, like large chains that are in that state because they got millions of dollars of, of money that may, we may not see in this next recession. And uh, you know what? It, it reminds me of the dot-com or even pre um, the 2008. There were a lot of businesses and chains and big companies that you'd be like, there's no way they're not going to be here. Sears. They're gone. And I think we're going to see a lot of that now because we've encouraged bad business. We've encouraged zombie businesses. Um, the last piece of this is we have bad businesses because there's such an employment gap right now. We're desperate for professionals. So these bad businesses and these zombie businesses are hiring bad professionals. Let's face it, almost nobody is in the same profession or job that they were in 2008. So they've only known good times and you can be sloppy. You can be bad at your job. And guess what? You still have that job and you're still making money. You may even still be making good money. This type of event, a recession, will help cleanse those people out of the industry. Think back to 2008. Is all of the people that were in you know, lending, um, real estate, things like that, the people that couldn't make it, that weren't really good at their job, they're gone. They got wiped out of the system. and. Most of them did not come back that were very bad at that. They found other professions and other careers that they were good at, and they excelled in that. So again, not a bad thing. There's so many professionals. I mean, before that, the, the, the dot-com bubble, so many people were in tech and stocks and things like that, and they were wiped out because those that weren't very good at it couldn't make a living, so they had to move on. That is why we need these recessions. Now, to close this up, my hope is that this isn't a bad one. But we printed so much money and the run up was so long and there's been so many bad decisions, I'm nervous. I am so hopeful because there is more millionaires and more innovation and more things that come out of recessions and downturns that change everyday life. Things that, that just affect absolutely every day. I mean, go back and look at the list of companies that didn't exist before 2008. A lot of those people lost their jobs and they went out and made these things. And these are the companies that we do everyday business. Uber, Airbnb, those kind of companies which are just life changing for human civilization did not exist before the last downturn. Their founders found hardship and they went out and innovated. That is what we need here. That is the part I'm excited about. And again, I'm a little nervous about you know this long run up and how long it's gone and how much pain and how long this could last. I can't foresee crazy things like war and things like that that may continue to stimulate the economy. But I do worry if we keep doing stimulus and we push this up further and longer, the pain is going to be worse. So on that note, I know this is a long one and I know it was a lot of information and I know it was some bad news, but 
you know, th this is what we need. We, we have to go through this. So I appreciate you watching. Please do me a favor, like, share, do your thing, subscribe. It really help me out um, just to keep being motivated to do these videos. So again, thank you. Check out some of my other videos and be smart about this. I mean, there's opportunity out there in every downturn and you could be one of those millionaires that come out of the next one. But if we don't have one, you can't do it. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and have a